All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to be talking about five lessons that I learned in the first year of being an entrepreneur. Now, I started three businesses my first year as an entrepreneur. I read Rich Dad Poor Dad and I was like, man, I gotta get on this YouTube stuff. YouTube seemed like ultimate freedom for me. And I had always wanted to create videos for a living. Creating videos is one of the most things, or the most important things in my life. It's something I'm very passionate about. And I've always wanted to be a video creator. I didn't know that it was gonna be gig related or whether it was entrepreneur related or anything like that. I initially started my YouTube channel as an extreme sports vlogger and I would have never seen where that was gonna take a turn. I also started a footwear company and a acrobatic stunt show. Now, I'm gonna go over some of the tips that I learned in my first year of business. Before we get into that, if you guys haven't yet, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and also smash that like button for me and tell me what kind of business you guys have started down below, whether it's an independent contractor, whether you're a gig driver, whether it's photography, whatever it is, let me know in the comments down below what business you guys are starting. Number one, the first tip that I wanna give out is take on almost every single client that you possibly can. Now, I say almost because I don't mean take on clients that aren't gonna have the money for you, seem like they might be a waste of time. For me, uh, having an acrobatic stunt show, it's all about how much footage you can get. You're basically your stunt reel or your show reel is what sells the show to future clients. And having as many different shows for me was very important. So of course we had those clients that come at you and give you like a really, really low ball order. And obviously you can't work with those ones. But any client that's almost worth your time, especially in the first year of business, it's something you should definitely take on. Uh, I can relate this to uh, my first show that I ever did for Off Axis was a stunt show in a haunted amusement park in Ohio. And the show did not pay well at all. And we only had two of the three performers I needed. But I was like, look, I just need footage to sell my act to future companies and if I didn't get that footage, I might not have even been in business. It's little things like this where you take it and you just have to push through it. Maybe it doesn't pay as much as you would like it to, but these are the contracts and stuff that or clients that you need to take on just to build yourself as a business. It's not always gonna be like, you're not gonna get the best clients at first. Like my whole goal was always to get into amusement parks. And when I was offered this show that we're currently doing at Bush Gardens, I would have taken it for, it doesn't even matter what price. Like I would have done it for just about anything just to get my foot in the door so that way I can sell to future uh, theme parks after this. Um, number two is have a side hustle. That side hustle has got to be something, maybe it's like gig related like DoorDash, maybe you're a photographer. Um, I personally went the gig route because I knew I can log in whenever I want, make money whenever I want, and that's important for me to be able to pay my bills off with a side hustle income and not have to take the profits that I make out of my businesses and uh, pay myself. The first year, I didn't, first two years, I didn't pay myself with any of the money that my businesses made. And it took quite a while to get going, but we're in year three and it all that reinvestment back into the company really paid off. Personally, what I would do is I would log in and I would make $70 every single day on DoorDash. And that would give me at least $2,100, which would cover all my bills and keep my ship floating rather than sinking you know you do not want to start falling behind on bills especially if you're an entrepreneur the next tip is scheduling yourself if you're not scheduling yourself no one's going to schedule you i find that it's very important to make a to-do list and to also schedule myself i what i have is a 10 o'clock a.m alarm that goes off every single monday and reminds me to make a to-do list or a schedule my to-do list is like the things that i think of what should I get done this week? And I'm running three different businesses, so there's a various amount of things. There's seven YouTube videos on there. There's footwear sales, there's show sales. There's all kinds of things that I need to do as someone who owns multiple businesses. And it's very important to at least schedule yourself because if you're not scheduling yourself, like I said, no one else is going to. So I would highly suggest, let's do it right now. Hey Siri, wake me up every Monday at 10 a.m. As simple as that. And now you know every single Monday, it's time to wake up and set a schedule for yourself. The next one is to have a good morning routine, something that you do every single day. For example, every single day I wake up and I go either make a cup of coffee or I make some pre-workout and I go to the gym. 
I feel, or I find that going to the gym first thing in the morning, it's a great way to wake yourself up. It gets your whole entire body pumping and your body just functions a lot better for the rest of the day if you work out first thing in the morning. Now, I typically do it fasted. I think just doing a quick fasted workout in the morning just gets my mind going and I can think of more ideas and things like that to write down on my to-do list or for creative ideas for YouTube as well. And the final tip I have for you guys is to simplify things. You need to have work cardio. You're not going to do something that's very tedious every single day. If all like if you can barely make through it one day, you don't want to plan on doing that for an entire year. I personally, I simplified my YouTube videos down very, very simple compared to what they used to be. They used to take forever to edit. And then after one year of doing it, I was just like pulling my hair. I was like, I don't think I can do this anymore. Then the moment I simplified everything, everything came together. Now it's very important to have that work cardio because if you start to give up on your dreams at six months into entrepreneurship, it's not going to work. You need to simplify things, make them as simple as possible. For me, it was doing DoorDash. And while I was doing DoorDash, I would, uh, I would, make those sales calls that I needed to. I could work on my social media from my phone. I would be making money to get by and it kept it very, It's a. it was a very small window where I could get so much done. I was making money, I was filming YouTube videos, I was getting everything done. And it, it kept it very simple and enjoyable because I wasn't taking up my entire day and I wasn't doing anything tedious that I was just like, uh, I couldn't, I just didn't want to do, you know? So those are my five tips for anyone who is thinking about starting a business, just started a business, or is thinking about going from maybe an independent gig driver over and starting their business, or it doesn't matter what it is. Those are my tips for you guys. Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't yet, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. And also, if you haven't yet started downloading or uh, started investing into crypto or stocks, you can check out my Robinhood link. It's down in the description. Click on that link, you'll get at least a free stock, and you can learn how to invest into crypto or different stocks. I think that's very important for everyone. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.